Hello and welcome to Video DNA, where the English is bad and the tutorials are good. I'm Yonan Tabib and today we're going to see how we can work with the arrow preset. But if you haven't seen the promo yet, check this out. In a world of endless presets, only one of them will change your life forever. Okay, that was the super exaggerated promo. Let's talk about this little preset. Actually, it's a very simple preset and uh, where which you can make arrows really, really fast. And it saved me tons of work and tons of uh, hours at work. And actually, it's a pretty simple preset. And once you download it, uh, you're gonna get this arrow package, which inside uh, you can get this uh, After Effects project and you can hear where the preset lies and if you don't know how to install in after effects the preset you can double click the readme and see how you can install it step by step okay so what is arrow actually arrow is really really simple okay i'm gonna create a new comp and i'm gonna search for arrow and all i need to do is to double click and I have an arrow, that's it. Okay, I have a nice arrow. And let's see what we have here. First of all, uh, I have the start, which decides where the left arrow is gonna be. And I have the end, which decide where the end one is gonna be. And if I want to animate this arrow, I can really simply change their values, put a keyframes, go a little bit forward in time and change the values that's it it's that simple and you can see that it's exactly how the beam effect works and the stroke effects work and the text animator works and if you don't know them well you know them now and that's it that's the biggest thing about this plugin and that's how it works but let's go on and see what other features make this hour work so I have length well, if I want to scale it, I don't need to touch the length. I can just scale it up and it's vector based. It's based on shape layers, so it will never blur out or, or pixelate. But the fun thing about length is if I design an arrow, I duplicate it and now I want a smaller one over here. I can see that the design is changed. You know, the, the line is thicker and the arrow heads are smaller. But if I'm gonna change the length, it's only gonna change the length of the line. That's it, everything will remain the same except of the length. So it's a pretty powerful feature. So let's talk about the size a bit. The size is gonna change the arrowhead size. And if I want to change the ratio, I can go to the ratio and change that too. So if I want big fat arrows and if I want them to be very, very delicate. And now, if you want to change width of the, of the line, you can go to the regular panel and change it to whatever you want. Okay, it's that simple. Again, it's based on shape layers. So if you know them a bit, you know how to manipulate this. Okay, the appearances. Actually, the appearances is the best feature here because that's what makes the arrows go smaller once they're close enough to each other. Okay, you see that? They become smaller. And how much close is that? Well, the default is 10, which means when the, the range between the start and the end is 10, still nothing happens. But if the range drops down, it will automatically scale. And if you want to change this, you can actually write everything. So now when the start and the end range will be 50 from one another, it will automatically start to scale down until it disappears. If you don't want the appearances to work, you can actually put a negative number 
and now nothing will happen. So you can actually scale it down by yourself. That's nice. Okay, so moving on. The color. I can change the color of the arrow. That's it. That's all it's gonna do. And the next two things, okay, I have the um, I have this the show start arrow, I can check and toggle if I want to see that one or not, and the other one as well. That's it. And this is the preset, and again, it's based on shape layers, and with the fun thing about that, if you know a little bit about shape layers, you can actually go inside and change things for yourself. Let's look at it. Okay, so we're gonna enter the contents and to the shapes, and I have the line, I can manipulate the line, I can manipulate the start or the end arrow. Let's say I want this arrow to be a circle. So I'm gonna go to the start arrow, and I'm gonna go to the polygon star, and I'm gonna change the point number. Let's scale it up a bit so we can see this. The point number to be bigger. Now I have an ellipse, but if I'm gonna change the ratio to 100, I'm gonna get a perfect circle. So this is the preset, and it's gonna save you tons of work, and tons of time so let's see some examples so we can understand how we can work with it better so we're gonna go to all around here I just duplicate it and rotate them in a 3d manner that's nice okay let's go to something that is less obvious here I got arrow that is not straight okay let's see how we can achieve that okay I have this big arrow and the big secret is bend it. I have an effect on it. Okay, let's see how we can make it work. I'm gonna delete the bend it effect and I'm gonna search it, bend it. And I'm gonna put it on the big arrow and now it disappears. And that's because arrow is based on shape layers, vector, and this effect bend it is based on pixels. And when you try to combine them together, hell breaks loose, but we can manage it. So if I'm gonna take the top pointer, I'm gonna put it on the edge of the arrow, and then I'm gonna take the bottom one and I'm gonna put it in the middle of the arrow. I'm gonna try to make it as accurate as possible so it's not cu cut off. Okay, now I can see that I can bend it. Hence the name. Okay, that's nice. That's really, really nice. And if I want to bend it the other way around. But remember this. If it's not going to be accurate, it will cut. If we're going to move the arrow, it will change in a very, very freaky way. And if you want to solve this problem, you can actually put the bend it. I'm going to cut it into the memory, to the clipboard. And I'm going to pre-comp this big arrow. Big arrow comp. Amazing. I'm going to press OK. And I'm gonna paste it again. Now I have the same bent, but when I move the arrow, it's not gonna go crazy. Excellent! So to the next example. Okay, let's go to the arrow track. I have this nice track of uh, remote control of an old Apple TV. And I opened some arrows next to it. It's really, really nice. And let's see how we can do this. First of all, we need to track it. And if you don't know how to track it, you're more than welcome to get inside other tutorials in this site and to 3D track it and to put a little grid that it will help us understand better and connect the arrows to it. So after I finish tracking and put all of this stuff, I'm gonna call the arrow preset. And I'm not gonna select nothing, so this will not happen again. And I'm going to turn off the track solid and I'm going to turn on the 3D layer button for the arrow and I'm going to parent it while pressing shift and it's going to jump to the same location of the track solid. So now all I need to do is to rotate it in 90 degrees and I'm going to put it right over here and maybe I'm going to scale it down and now I want it to open up. Okay, let's open it. Uh, actually, I wanted to open up from here. So I'm gonna start with zero at the end. I'm gonna 
put a keyframe on the end, and after a second, it's gonna be 100. And it's always nice to have some easy ease. Perfect. Now let's take this arrow, I'm gonna duplicate it, and I'm gonna rotate it, move it over here, and I'm gonna check the middle of it right in here. And I don't want to scale it down. I actually want to change the length of it. Okay, let's change the length. Okay. And don't worry, it's red because it's protected. So you cannot go below zero. That's nice. And I'm going to move it over here. And that's it. That's all you have to do for it. Okay, we have nice arrows. And we can duplicate those and take them up. And I'm going to change the shadow color to black. And here I'm going to take the black too. And maybe I'm going to blur it a bit. I'm going to call fast blur. Put it on one of the arrows. And scale it up. Amazing. Copy paste and we have nice arrows with nice animation in zero time well and if it's not accurate enough we can always move it wherever we want like over here amazing okay let's continue um big arrow comp what is that ah that's nothing okay this cube is actually a lot like the 3D cube in the tutorial, the first tutorial of the site. Uh, but actually this time I made it with some arrows and nothing to it. With a little camera I can rotate around it. And the actually fun stuff is right over here. I have a 3D arrow that is curved in space. Which is actually pretty hard effect to get. Until now. Actually the secret is, is that we have a cylinder effect. So let's see how we can make this work. So first of all, I'm not going to select nothing. I'm going to call the arrow preset. And now I want to turn off the start arrow and I want to scale it up and maybe make it a little bit wider. Okay. And now I want to pre-comp it. So I'm going to call this arrow. Amazing. So now I want to call the offset effect. And the offset effect will help, help us move this arrow. So it's going to rotate in the end. So I'm going to put a keyframe right over here, go to the end, and maybe I think this is going to be enough. Yeah, this is nice. And now what I want to do, I'm going to call the cylinder effect. And watch out, don't turn it into a 3D layer. It's supposed to be 2D because the effect is 3D. So it knows where the camera is and it's going to change how it looks based on the camera angle. Okay, so we have this. It's nice. I don't like the, the lighting, so I'm going to go to the shading, turn the ambient up to 100%. And... If I'm going to change it, I can see that there is still a little bit of a problem. But actually, we can solve this very easily. The CC Cylinder effect has a render option. I can render the outside or the inside. But if I make two copies, one of them is going to render the outside. I'm going to duplicate it, put one copy below the screwdriver, and I'm going to tell it to render the inside. I can actually see a 3D curved in space arrow. That's amazing. The last thing I want to show you is this one. How we can make and how we can change the arrowheads. Because the arrowheads are based on a polystar. If you know them a little bit, you can change whatever you want inside them. And if you don't, I'm going to show you right now. So first of all, I'm going to delete this layer and I'm going to open a new fresh arrow. Okay, nothing is selected. Double click. We have an arrow. I'm going to make this two pixels, too much, three pixels. And now I want to change the start arrow. So I'm going to go to the contents, to the shapes. 
and into the start arrow options. I'm going to go to polystar path and I'm going to change the point number to 4. And now it, it's not rotated right, so I'm going to change the rotation to 45 degrees. And now I have a cube. So the secret is to change the ratio. So I'm going to change the ratio enough and I'm going to scale it down until it's going to be the same width of the line itself. That looks about right. No, a little bit more. Perfect. And now instead of doing that again, I'm going to go to the polystar path. I'm going to copy its attributes. And I'm going to go to the end arrow and I'm going to paste it right over here. And that's it. From now on, it's totally the same. I'm going to go to the, now I'm going to put the keyframe and I'm going to go to the start, 50 by 50. So it will start from the beginning. Amazing. And if I don't want it to, I want these to come out first. I can change the appearances to 0, 1. And now I'm going to change the scale, the, the ratio. Okay, so I think here it's going to be this number and here it's going to be zero. So now it's going to whoop. No, that's not better. Okay, I'm going to take this, put it over here. And now I have this animation. Nice. Well, that's it. That's all you need to know about this preset. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And remember, we have a lot more tutorials and more to come. And if you want to stay updated, you can like us on Facebook and be updated okay, in any news we have. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you will use it. And then I hope it's going to save you a lot of time. I'm Ilat Khabib from Video DNA. I'll see you next time.